have accreditation. Only fools rush in. But you are different because you are watching this video. Hi, I'm Anthony. Cap accreditation, the highly acclaimed certificate in the lab that will captivate any future partnerships no, for no, your no, for, no, no. for your lab. The reason why you get it is because it shows you're legit. It shows you are the captain of the lab who knows how to run it effectively with clear documents on everything about your lab and actually following through. So that's why we're going to go over an overview of how to get CAP accreditation in your lab. So let's get started. CAP stands for the College of American Pathologists. What they basically do is it's an organization to help ensure that your lab maintains the highest standards for accurate test results and improving patient care and safety. The other reason why it's important is because this opens up so many doors for lots of opportunities and partnerships with other companies that need testing, whether it's for testing results or researching new drugs, and that's just the surface. If you want to apply for CAP, the very first step is to go to the website and apply at cap.org. Shocking, I know. And once you do that, they should send you a welcome kit with links to resources, as well as an onboarding call with a CAP representative who will guide you through the process. Just to give you a heads up, there's a deadline of around three months to complete the application. So you wanna make sure that you actually finish it within that time period. Otherwise, you might have to reapply. The second step is that you will receive a multiple customized checklist for your lab based on the type of testing your lab does in order to receive CAP accreditation. For example, if you only do COVID testing, you may have to tackle like four checklists to ensure that it meets the requirements. Now, if you do something like cannabis and COVID testing, then you'll probably have many more checklists. And this will be really hard to describe for you specifically and your lab because, well, it's customized. So this means that you have various departments and perform different different types of testing, then you won't have the same exact process as another lab. But what we can show you is learning what one lab did that we know of that got CAP accreditation. And this can help you because you can have like a rough idea of what to expect for your lab. So once you receive the customized checklist, then you will want to schedule an inspection date, which is then mailed and or emailed to your lab. The inspection date usually takes around six months. And this is where the real grind begins. Prepping for the on-site inspection. The good old fun, fun times. So let's get started with one of the most important things to check is making sure that you have the IQ OQ documentation for all of your equipment. What IQ OQ stands for is installation qualification and operation qualification. And what this means is that your instruments are installed and functioning properly. The next thing you want to have is full documentation on your validation. And what that basically means is that your tests that you run are reproducible and accurate for all samples. And this is really important because you want to have a standardized way to accurately get results no matter who is operating the equipment. And finally, you need standard operating procedures, also known as SOPs and documents for everything. And I mean everything. Everything. First thing we're going to cover is the SOPs. Separated the SOPs into three categories, pre-analytical, analytical, and post-analytical. Pre-analytical SOPs are anything that's done before you start analyzing the sample. So this can include things like how to do specimen collection, accessioning it, and listing out the specimen types and requirements. So basically, what you do with your sample before you start actually testing it. Analytical SOPs are where you document the actual testing process. So this means writing out exactly what you use and do from the beginning to the end, which can include things like manipulating the sample, using any automation or instruments, or even how the sample is being transported within the workplace. Oh, that's pretty good. Finally, the last type is post Fuck. <laughs> okay, can you scroll back up? I jinxed myself. Finally, the last type is post-analytical SOPs, and as the name suggests, this means documentation on anything post-analytically. This includes things with what you do after the reporting result is out, such as how to contact your clients, how to notify providers, and correcting any reports. Now, another component of SOPs you will need to do is cover safety, and safety is huge in the lab because you know, they want you to be safe in the lab. And what basically every lab needs is a safety binder, which includes safety instructions and an SDS. An SDS stands for safety data sheets. And basically you could think of it like a cheat sheet with chemicals and properties and how to handle something ever goes wrong. Buffer in your eyes and there would be instruction on how to rinse it out immediately. Or someone started drinking some chemicals because they thought it was water and then they found out it was actually 100% pure water meant only for testing. Then it probably would have instructions to you know, send them to a hospital or 
something. That, and that's the point of the SES. Then there's also a list of requirements for the small things that you really don't think about, but if the time actually comes, you're glad it's there. Like having eye wash within a certain amount of feet, having exit signs on the doors easily visible. It's those small things where it's very important. And I bet you're going to start noticing the exit signs in your lab now. And plus, this can also include things like having a safety shower, hand washing stations, first aid kits, fire extinguishers, and making sure that everything is marked and easily viewed. And we mean that you want everything labeled such as certain cleaning bottles for your workstation and equipment so it's very clear that you're cleaning with certain chemicals. You also have to be even specific on when those are changed out and scheduling it whenever it's changed. Yes, it's even the granular things like this where stuff... Crap, can you scroll back up? Yes, it's even the granular things like this stuff that CAP standards look out for. And then there are things like keeping a maintenance binder, making sure the lab is clean, tracking the inventory, the lab supplies, tracking the temperature and humidity, tracking the cold storage temperatures, doing all the safety courses for lab hygiene, doing all the training and competencies for every process. And that's just the main overview. I did warn you it would be a lot of SOPs. That's typically why CAP accreditation typically takes around two years because you have to get all of this documented, all of it, and then they have to implement it and ensure that it's followed. Otherwise, there isn't much point to the documentation. But we know that Media Lab has something called an inspection proof where you can upload the checklist that CAP provides, which is super helpful because it helps you keep track of the nitty gritty stuff. Plus, the reason why people like having an online system is because you can have all the documents organized online and stored in one place. It's time to stay modern, guys. So instead of having those tons of binders with papers, we highly recommend that you check out an online system. Now, the next thing to cover is the documentation for training. And I think you may start to get an understanding of what CAP is looking for, but you want documentation on everything. The goal is that you want to make sure that all the lab techs and anyone in the lab performs processes in a standardized way and knows exactly what to do with every scenario and how to use each lab equipment properly. This means that they need one, documented training, and then two, a competent, competent, competency, com how do, you, how do you say that word? Competency assessment. This is especially important if you do multiple kinds of tests. For example, let's say you do COVID testing and then you also do gut testing in your lab. And let's say during COVID-19 that all the lab techs were primarily doing COVID testing and they have it muscle memory on the exact routine since they've been doing it for over a year. But then someone needs gut testing and what we wanna make sure is that they could have potentially forgotten a step or two during the gut testing because someone needed it. And that's the purpose of the internal competency to make sure that the lab tech can still perform a gut test with the right skills and knowledge. So once you complete those internal training documents, you also need a place to store your personal documentation for each employee. This includes at a minimum your education, degree, your resume, job description, and license if applicable. Something to consider is also having documentation on how to navigate your limb system and how to use it properly. A limb system is a laboratory information management system, which basically helps you to effectively manage samples and associate the data in an organized way. Basically, you can easily track the progress of your samples. It can also include things like tracking your reagents, tracking your inventory management, tracking your sample management, the process of the samples, and even reporting your results out. And finally, you want to enroll in a proficiency testing program. I know CAP has a program, but there's also other programs like the American Proficiency Institute where they send samples with a known result and you just want to make sure that you can get the same results as them to verify that your testing is accurate. Because if it's not, then well, it's gonna be a huge red flag that some parts of your testing may not be right. And once you finish all of that, then you await the on-site inspection day. They will be using the same customized checklist so there should be no surprises. And you will receive a copy of their report at the end. So if there are any deficiencies or some things that you may have missed, then you have 30 days to respond to any deficiencies. They will then review your application and hopefully you will receive your CAP accreditation certificate by mail to the lab director. And you're basically at the finish line. The last thing you want to do is you want to maintain this CAP accreditation after all the hard work you did. And you just want to perform self-inspection and just make sure that you maintain compliance so that you don't lose it. So that's the overview, creating documentation for every single thing in your lab and following it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe this channel. Peace out. Oof. Oh man.